Do you like current television? <laughs> um, yeah. But, you know, current means 2019, not necessarily America. I'm a huge, like, I'm never getting rid of Netflix because Netflix has a huge selection of Asian television that's current, that I love. Like Singaporean television, Korean television, Thai television, Taiwanese television, Chinese television, Japanese television. Like my entire Netflix interface has none of the stuff that everybody's talking about on Netflix. It's got all the Asian stuff, like all of it. They just really, to me, It's really strong emotional stories and characters, like across the board, whether it's like comedies or romance or action or the really cool stuff is the historical stuff. There's a lot of really cool things that are set in, you know, ancient times in Korea, which is like so cool because like, it's kind of like an education about, you know, what it was like. Um, so most of my television watching is watching <laughs> Asian television on Netflix. Most of it. There is a new show that I absolutely adore that is on Cinemax. It's called Jet. It stars Carla Gugino. I think it's created by Sebastian Gutierrez. I think that's his name. I'm not sure. Anyway, he wrote and directed all the episodes and it's brilliant. And she's brilliant. It's so cool. It's like a quiet thriller. She plays a, a master thief. Um, and she's trying to get out of the game, but then she's got this old boss that pulls her back in. It's so good. And she, like the character of Jet that Carlo Gugino has created, so cool, so cool. So Jet is probably my favorite show now that anyone in America would know about. <laughs> <laughs> um, I saw Dead to Me on Netflix, the Christina Applegate show. I like that. Um, they called it a comedy. I don't really think it's a comedy, but it was very good. Uh, I'm kind of missing the boat on a lot of the broadcast network shows, only because I'm so obsessed with all the stuff on Netflix. So I don't really know if things are good or bad to my liking or not. I'm just so stuck in Asia on Netflix that I just don't get to the, to the American stuff. I still haven't seen Big Little Lies. I hear it's awesome. Um, I still haven't seen that. I can't even think of like what's on the regular networks right now. That's like the hot stuff. What's the hot stuff on the the ABC and the NBC and Ooh, the CBS. I don't know. <laughs> I hear there's a Chicago thing happening. Chicago Fire, Chicago PD, Chicago Law, Chicago Sanitation, Chicago. <laughs> like, it's, like, it's like a bunch of shows and they're all the same show, but they're in Chicago, but it's in different departments. So I, uh, I, I can't get into that stuff, but. Do you think comedy is the same as it used to be? You think things, no. things are funny? Comedy used to be funny. Like that used to be the definition of comedy. You know what I mean? Like it used to be comedy and you laugh and that's comedy. Now it's more like, hmm, that's funny. <laughs> and that's comedy. That's not comedy. You know what I mean? Like comedy should make you laugh in my opinion. And there's a lot of things that I see that are labeled as comedies, and they're not comedies. 
they're 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 it's not that it's not that they're invalid you know it's just their 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 statements on social mores or or culture or race or gender or, all of that's good and well and fine but it's not a comedy it's not comedy should make you laugh there's a netflix uh stand up thing that everyone loves i've i've not seen all of it um na 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 nadet i think it's called it's i think she's an australian comedian um it's really good but it didn't make me laugh you know it was like a ted talk really you know there's like humorous moments in it but it wasn't i didn't find it to be funny and again like it it's not like it's not valuable it's not like it's not timely or relevant but for me i want to laugh at something called a comedy <laughs> well, i mean like this is 40 i watched it years later and I was like, oh, I probably this is probably going to be like forced things. No, it was hilarious for me. Was it really? The moment it started. Oh, that's awesome. And I was like, how could I have gone this long without seeing it? I totally <laughs> judged it. Right. And then I felt like an idiot for judging it because it was so funny. Right. And it, the characters were so great. We'll see that might be exactly where I'm at. I might be judging stuff prior to and need to pay a little bit more attention to what's going on. I mean, um It's always sunny in Philadelphia. Super hilarious every single episode. I love that show. That show is amazing. Yeah. Oh my god. So wrong. Like everything is about it. It's like Seinfeld on crack. It's like everything is wrong. They're awful people. But it's funny and it's saying something. Um What else? And this is more TV, I think. I think I think there's more leeway in film. That's true. Then there is in television. Um I didn't, I, yeah, I I can't really think of it. I you know who's really funny? Like really funny, like probably like the best comedian out there in my opinion right now is Ali Wong. Hmm. Ali Wong has two stand-up specials. Okay. On Netflix right now and um her film Always Be My Maybe. She's hilarious. I'll have to check it out. Dirty, dirty, nasty, but really, really funny. Were you a big sitcom kid back in the day? I loved them. Loved them. Always thought a sitcom would be like the perfect place to live as an actor. Did a lot of pilots, did a lot of sitcom pilots, didn't get picked up. Yeah, sitcoms are fun, man. Especially when they're funny. Yeah. They're not always funny. No. No, but there's so I mean like for to me taxi best sitcom just, ever. Just amazing. Like you just couldn't best sitcom ever. They didn't even have to speak. Hands down. You no. Know? Best sitcom in the world. Jim Ignatowski would just come in. I know. And and just that was it. Done. Just just a look, you Done. know. Is the, the perfect storm of character and story and right. I have a friend, we always have this argument. taxi versus cheers. Oh, that's a good one. And I always tell him you got no cheers without taxi. Similar, they're coming into sort of a working class environment. There's a cast of characters, so sort of the alpha same makers. Okay. Taxi came first. Taxi was a hit. ABC cancels Taxi. NBC picks it up for its final season. Cheers ends up on NBC. No Cheers without Taxi. Ah. Oh. So for me, Taxi is the king. Even though Cheers ran for like 16,000 years after Taxi. So good. Was so good. Was so 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 good. Yeah, I love that show. Yeah. I wish I could I wish that was on the air somewhere. That'd be that'd be great. I know everybody's watching Friends over and over and over again um in the office the office was great 
But no, I don't know if that's, that's not the same kind of sitcom, you know? It's more of a single camera thing, whereas like, so I, f- I feel like they're different beasts. There's like the single camera comedy, like The Office. And I think that's a different species of comedy than like Friends or Taxi, like, you know, that three camera audience thing. I know a lot of people don't like the audience laughing because they feel like, oh, I'm being told to laugh at this, whatever. And I get that. Um, I don't know. I think, I think there's a little nostalgia. It's kind of cool about sitcom, sitcom laughter, sitcom comedy. It's an art to it. <laughs>